Engineer 775, on to the next job. We are in a, a tight mech room, but we're gonna get it done. We gotta build a critical loads panel for this house. We're uh, starting from the bottom up with these arc batteries. I'm gonna use our 10, 10 inch gutter under there and then mount solar critical lows panel. I don't know where we're gonna fit our bypass in. We gotta fit that bypass in. And uh, the meter base is on the outside. We got a fuse disconnect, some Ilsco line side tap going out there. This is a home line panel. We'll probably pick up another home line panel to do uh, critical loads. I don't know if we're gonna pick up a smaller one. We haven't decided that yet. So just getting to work on this mech room. Okay, the end of day one. Soul arc is on the wall. Got our arc batteries in place. Got our bypass in place. We got this 225 amp home line panel that we're gonna build a critical loads panel right here. And so we can bring our circuits in and out of there. And then uh, we're gonna bring our, we gotta get out to our AC disconnect. I missed this plumbing. Hello. And then our DC, we're gonna bring in there and drop two one inch EMTs into the got wiring trough. And um, we do need to put a PDB in the gutter for the bypass. And then um, we should be in pretty good shape. There's some other things that we always end up having to do, but uh, we're, in, we're making good progress. Okay, for inspection, our trench is two foot deep. Customer wanted a water line thrown in there, so I did that. Two inch PVC conduit, at least 18 inches to the top, all the way, and I'm putting trench and tape in. So the rain is coming, just wanted to see if I could beat the mud. Just wanted to show you that uh, we're deep enough all the way to the house. Hope that's good. Not much video today. We were in a race to beat the rain. We got our trench into the house. You can see the disconnects up here we got everything in there and the customer had water lines and other electrical lines that we added for them while we were digging even a line to the wood boiler so we were just digging and uh got the disconnect wired up we don't have the array wired up and the mechanical room needs another day building the critical loads panel but i had no time to film today anyway we're gonna Hopefully finish most of it tomorrow and call for inspection. And uh, we'll be back. Hopefully we'll get a Monday inspection and we pass. We're on to the next one. Good morning on day three of this off-grid hybrid build we are very grateful the rain is blowing away blown out of here and abraham and wes are working on wiring up the array good morning boss good morning beautiful out. it is beautiful out so this is a 12.8 kilowatt array kind of our standard fare for solark house is over there that we're going to be powering we got our trench in Kind of in the rain but we got it in got the wires pulled in yesterday that's always a good thing to have done before you go home all right so i'm just going to load up we're loading up a excavator i hid in the wood so nobody would steal it and i'm gonna load up the driver and then we're gonna wire finish wiring in the mech room get some hot water solutions we're gonna put a transfer switch in for some hot water when the grid's down we got to work on some moves today, electrical moves. These guys are paralleling. They're, there'll be uh, four strings of eight, two in parallel. So it's a series parallel combination. And we can take this whole array in to the house. We use number eight, THHN. It's about 230 foot pull. So when we're over 200 feet on the solar arc, the rule of thumb is to go with number eight up until about 400 feet and transition to number six if you have to but this one was about 230 feet away so we're number eight four strings in the ground and um i guess that's it i most disconnects already landed there 
and let's get to work. What makes uh, these jobs enjoyable for me is having the right tools, the right piece of equipment, and the excavator has proven to be what we need. The mini has been great because I'm in close to, like yesterday, dodging water lines, power lines, wood boilers. You don't need a big machine on these jobs, and it's just big enough to run the post pounder and then take that off and put on my buckets. So I got another one coming, a Yanmar SV40, which is one size up with a bigger counterweight. The counterweight to kind of match the driver, be better balanced. It also has three pumps. This only has one hydraulic pump. The new one will have two PTOs, so I'll have a pump dedicated to running um, accessories like the Rambo driver or a forestry mulcher, any type of attachment I want to add. I'm probably going to keep this because this is just a great backup bay. The cool thing, the reason I didn't step up to a bigger machine, the 40 has the same quick coupling. I can use all my buckets will be interchangeable. All the attachments will be the same no matter what machine. So I like backups to backups and having this one on the farm. If the other one's being serviced, we can still take this to the job. But it's been awesome. I think I got 600 hours on it now. Oh, she's a little dirty. What do I got on this thing? 584. 584. So, it's been a wonderful addition. It's been awesome to have this and not have to rent. Let's get her loaded up and headed towards the house. Okay, we're wrapping up this uh, solar job on the third day. Uh, CTs in. We might not even use these CTs, but I always like to put them in in case there's something that changes with the utility and we have to zero export work behind the meter. The other thing we did here is a new move. These supply side taps. We're using uh, Polaris lugs and passing through, stripping that wire out, passing through so you can tighten here and obviously land in the lug and then add the inverter side to that Polaris. So that's pretty slick. Willis just did that for us. So we learned a new Polaris supply side tap move today. That's great. So we're about to throw these fuses in here and do some testing. Hopefully do some testing this afternoon. Get everything labeled. We've called for inspection. And uh, the usual, work on comms, which like most inverters, sometimes the comms take the longest time. What are you doing down there? I'm doing some grounding. Abraham is making sure that all of our raceways and metal boxes have ground bars in them and landing the grounds. So everything is bonded. This is a kind of a remodel. I checked. We, are, we already have the two ground rods six feet apart. We're good there. So hopefully we'll, I had hoped for an inspection on Monday, but it's going to happen Tuesday. And there's the array over there. Getting ready to turn it on. Actually, it is on. I'm running 385 volts on the uh, two MPPT channels. All right, let's go see how we're doing in the mech room. All right, we're not done, but we wanted to show you um, just an in-process. We're giving this customer an off-grid water solution. We're running his water heater element on his electric water heater, which is right here, this A.O. Smith. And we put in a transfer switch so he could switch when he's off-grid he can run this water heater. We put a 30 amp breaker in the critical loads panel, and but the solar is completely matching, not only matching it, it's running, charging the battery, running the load, plenty of solar to do it. And uh, great, that was just a little interim test. I wanted to show you why we have everything. So you can see all of our mess and critique why we don't have DC and AC separated. And and we need to vacuum it. Oh, but you're seeing how the sausage is made. Okay. We can throw some. We there's throw the, some there's the load on the water heater element. Again, you only want to do this during the day when you have plenty of solar. But you could, in theory, you could probably heat this tank three times. It takes about 88 kilowatts to heat a 50 gallon water heater from well water temperature up to um, 120 degrees. So um, that's it. That's just a little interim test before we go home. This is day three, we'll be back Monday. We push new software updates to the Solark, latest, greatest software, if you can see it. And so we're connected to our little Wi-Fi router. Batteries are juicing. 
Willis is just getting it. Oh, finally, a fan quiet. Quiet on the set. All right, so we will be moving circuits on Monday into this critical load panel, which gives me, makes me think about what is going to be happening. No longer, we probably, we're probably not gonna be doing critical loads panels anymore with these um, smart loads panels that are coming. They're load shaving. So picture a module that sits here with relays and it's tied to your main panel. It's gonna give you more capability to run these loads and manage them and load shave them. And so that's the tent. Uh, next year we'll be putting smart modules in instead of critical loads panels on both the 12K and the 15K. So that's coming. Um, hope to be a beta tester here too. Hint, hint, Solark. All right, let's, um, let's go home. It's the weekend and I've got more consultations, which makes me think of another thing. If you need a consult or want like some design help or need a system, that's what I do on the weekends. You can contact us through the website, sign up, and we'll get you a system, design it for you, ship it to you anywhere in the country. I also have people coming to my house to, uh, to pick things up. I've got customers coming from Texas, Indiana tomorrow, Tennessee. So if you need equipment in this horrible supply chain type environment we live in, come get you some stuff. All right, we'll be back. All right, we're coming into the final stretch of this project, and it is critical load panel building day. Willis and Abraham are trying to clean up this, I don't know what you call it, but I'll be nice. Um, it's a mess right now. So we've moved the critical, we talked to the customer about which circuits were critical to them. There's usually the basics of well pumps, being able to have a hot shower. We're actually gonna run an air conditioner on this is one of the new train, uh, pretty low locking rotor amp condensing units, so we think we're good. And lights, refrigeration, internet, TV. Um, so, and then they have a, a wood boiler. We're gonna keep room for a wood boiler in this panel. So this will be automatic. Again, like I said, in the future, we're gonna be putting smart load managers in place of the critical loads panel and then managing the loads in this in the main but that's not here yet i'm supposed to have a beta unit here in a couple weeks and that'll be a that'll be a fun one so i think that is it i'm gonna get out of here instead of driving these guys crazy mm -hmm.